Hello, my name is Andrew and I'm going to give a presentation about a rare disease. This is an extremely rare progressive neurological disease that usually becomes apparent during infancy or early childhood. Less commonly, cases have been described which symptom onset has occurred later in childhood or adolescence or rarely during the third to fifth decades of life. It generally occurs randomly for unknown reasons with no family history of disease. Though there is a genetic defect that presents it is not genetically inherited. This disease is considered one of the leukodystrophies, which is a group of disorders in which the primary abnormality is ability to maintain myelin. Myelin is a wire substance that wraps around certain nerve cells and ensures the rapid transmission of nerve impulses. Symptoms associated with Alexander disease vary between the times of onset. There are three types of onset associated with Alexander disease. The first is infantile Alexander disease. This usually occurs before the age two. Symptoms associated with infantile Alexander disease include megalencephaly, which means the brain is abnormally large. This can be associated with delayed development, convulsive disorders, cortical spinal dysfunction, and seizures. A second symptom is hydrocephaly, which literally means water on the brain. This can cause pressure on the brain, resulting in de developmental defects and may also lead to an abnormally large head size. The third symptom is failure to thrive, a general term meaning that the child is not growing and gaining weight at the expected rate. A fourth symptom is seizures. Seizures occur when normal signals from the brain are changed. How severe the seizure is can vary dramatically. Some people may only shake slightly and do not lose consciousness. Other people may become unconscious and have violent shaking of the entire body. A fifth symptom is spasticity. This means that the child tends to suffer spasms or involuntary contractions of muscles. The muscles are normally stiff and movement is restricted. A sixth symptom is progressive psychomotor retardation. This can include difficulties with walking, speech, and mental regression. Even eventually, this can lead to the loss of all meaningful contact with the environment. The second type of onset is juvenile Alexander disease. This type usually occurs between the ages 4 and 10. Unlike infantile Alexander disease, mental ability and head size may be normal. However, symptoms that may occur during the juvenile onset include signs of swallowing or speech difficulty, vomiting, ataxia, and or spasticity. Mental function often slowly declines, although in some cases intellectual skills remain intact. The third type of onset is adult Alexander disease onset. Adult onset usually occurs in the late teens to very late in life. In older patients, ataxia often occurs in difficulty in speech articulation, swallowing, and sleep disturbances. The prevalence of Alexander disease is still unknown. 500 cases have been reported since the disorder was first described in 1949. There is no cure for this disease. The treatment for Alexander disease is symptomatic and supportive. Each case of Alexander disease is different, and therefore the treatment is different for the person that is suffering from the disease. One type of treatment for this disease is reducing the amount of hydrocephalus, which means water on the brain. This may be somewhat relieved by surgery in which a shunt can drain away some of the fluid that was causing the pressure. There are also medicines to take for the symptoms, but there is not a specific medicine to cure the disease as a whole. A second form of treatment may be a bone marrow transplant. Prognosis for Alexander disease is very low in terms of survival. In infantile onset, some die in the first year of life. Others live to 5 to 10 years old. In juvenile onset, survival can extend several years following onset of symptoms with occasionally longer survival into middle age. In adult onset, patients can live to be an older age. There are two very famous people with Alexander disease, Leonardo da Vinci and Jennifer Aniston. Leonardo da Vinci had Alexander disease, but he was still considered to be one of the greatest painters of all time. 
and possibly the most diversely talented person to ever live. Jennifer Aniston has Alexander disease, but she is still a successful actor, producer, and film director. She has been nominated for over 80 television and movie awards and has won 27 of them. The National Stem Cell Foundation is a website that provides information about different conditions and diseases affecting people worldwide. They support collaboration and information sharing. You can find this website at www.nationalstemcellfoundation.org or you can contact this address 333 East Main Street, Suite 400, Louisville, Kentucky 40202.